Well, hello. Welcome to the Double M Farm. Been a while since I've posted anything and I've had a few questions and inquiries about Little Red. And, hard to believe, but it's been a year. I have had the Little Harbor Freight towable trencher back home for one year. So I thought I would give a one year review and update. And the uh, most frequently asked question is, is it still strong and how many things have you broken? The answer is, yes, it's still strong. And we really haven't broken anything. Uh, the little machine has just continued to amaze and do uh, everything she's meant to do. Haven't had any major problems. The Predator engine still cranks on the first pull when it's cold. I have found that when it's warm, after you've been running it a while and shut it down, if you go to crank it back up, it's actually a little harder to crank then than it is when it's cold. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to crank with no choke when it's hot, but too much choke and it won't crank, so I have had to learn about where to place the choke. It's probably about a quarter of the way out to get it to crank on the first pull when it's hot. Sometimes it'll take two pulls. But it just runs like a top, sips gas. I can fill that tank up and dig all day long and still have fuel left over. I do use unleaded. It says in the manual that leaded gas is okay, but I do use the unleaded gas uh, with my own preference. Uh, I've got it hooked up to my little Ford 1210, which is what I normally pull it with around on the farm. Just pulled it out from under the shed to get into the light to make this quick video. Uh, an update on what we've done. Uh, the uh, extra set of tires and the way we carry them has worked out great. Gives a little extra weight to the tongue end when you're digging. And uh, makes it so much easier than having to move tires around the uh, standard stock way. I don't know if you can see it in the shadows. The sun is on the screen of my camera. I can't really tell what I'm looking at here, but the uh, little extended tongue that we made out of the inch and a quarter receiver tube uh, has worked out great. And you can see one of the reasons, in addition to the fact that it pulls better and is easier to back with a longer tongue, also, since I pull it so much on the farm with this little tractor, you see the uh, arms on the tractor, how close they are to the engine. If I hadn't extended the tongue, I wouldn't have been able to pull it with the tractor unless I used a uh, draw bar here with a hitch on it. And I don't like to pull it that way because you get all this swinging motion and it makes it so much harder to uh, maneuver. I have torn right here. I did that with the tire on the tractor, not paying attention to what I was doing I took a real sharp, hard turn, and this tire caught right here and pulled that, peeled that back. And really, that's probably the only thing I've broken on the machine. As far as the digging and use of the machine, I haven't broken anything. Uh, still, the stock seat have the uh, extra O-rings on the fill plug for the hydraulic tank keep it from leaking when it's tilted up. Got my little uh, piece of red pipe you see right there that I stand my umbrella up in to keep the sun off my head. A little beach umbrella. That's worked out good. The toolbox has worked great. It's actually, I think, marketed as an ammo box, but it worked out great. The U-bolts holding the outriggers on so that everything is contained into the machine don't have to haul anything extra. I even carry my uh, rake and shovel standing up in the uh, outriggers as I'm towing it. Don't tow it down the highway with those in there. They'd bounce out. Uh, and I don't tow it on the highway with the seat in it because it tends to bounce out. I believe I'm going to drill under the seat and put a pin through there uh, so that when I'm towing it, I don't have to take the seat off. Uh, I have cut back on how much I tow it on the highway just because I'm leery of the wear and tear that towing it on the highway will do to the machine. Um, 
again, I haven't broken anything. She still digs strong. You see how dirty she is. I just dug out a ditch. I actually dug out part of my well spring, and I haven't even cleaned it up. Got mud all over it. But I do keep it greased. I also keep it for safety reasons. Got the pin here. Got the yellow lock for the boom, and then the pin there to uh, keep it from swinging left to right. I have a theory about this main pin that some people have expressed concern over. I know of at least one person that had it break on them. It was on the older SKU, the, um, the orange machine. And I don't know if the newer machines, the red machines, which are the newer SKU, don't know if maybe that pin is stronger on these. I haven't had any problems, and I haven't heard of anyone else with the newer machines have any problems with that pin breaking. But I do have a theory, uh, have no proof, no facts to back it up. But if you'll look at the machine, every bit of the boom and dipper from there out is supported by that one pin. There's nothing holding that up but that one pin. And that's fine. It works great with normal use. But my theory is, if you tow this thing on the highway a lot, every time you hit a bump, the bouncing of that boom and weight of the bucket and the dipper is doing this and putting stress on that pin. So I'm wondering if that contributes, because I do know one gentleman on YouTube, I haven't heard from him in a lot of years, I believe it was a gone red car, he had trouble with his braking, but from watching his videos, I do know that he towed his on the highway a lot. And I'm wondering if that may be contributed to the braking of the pin. Um, so what I've started doing, if I have to tow mine any great distance, I just put the second set of wheels, tires on there so that it has four. And I have a winch on my trailer, and I just winch it up on the trailer. Then what I do is I take the locking pin off of the boom so that I can lower it and set the bucket down on the trailer so there is no weight and vibration on that pin. Don't know, again, it's just a theory in my head. Maybe I'm just an old man with too much time on my hand. But it's a theory I have. So uh, I can't really think of anything uh, <laughs> to say other than she's still working great. Uh, she digs strong as she did the day I put her together. Um, runs good. Everything is working the way it's supposed to work. Haven't broken any fittings and haven't broken anything in the actual use of it. And my gosh, there's so many things you can do with it. I've ditched. This is the best uh, spring rainy season I've ever had on this farm. Always had drainage and washout problems and I've dug out all of these roads and ditched them, dug catch basins, I uh, dug out a, uh, my spring and buried a pipe up to the uh, little duck pond that I also dug out with the trencher, dug out my um, oil pit, grease pit over there, dug a hole and walled it up, and that's where I parked my vehicles to work on them. Um, it's just uh, unlimited the number of things. I buried electric lines, water lines, dug a uh, backyard garden fish pond for a lady it, it just it goes on and on the things that you can do with the harbor freight trencher and if you were willing to do some odd jobs you could eventually make enough money to pay for the little thing so there you go a quick update one year review of little red going strong will uh <laughs> See how she does the second year. If she does as well in the second year as she's done in the first year, I'll have no complaints at all. So, thank you for joining us here on the Double M Farm, and we look forward to talking to you again real soon.